We are now live on YouTube. Okay, Give, we'll start this. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the cultural resource meeting. Um, I need uh, uh, adoption of the agenda. So if somebody could adopt the agenda motion. Um, Pat? Sure. And a seconder? Anna? And all in favor? Everyone? Okay, great. And uh, do we have any disclosure of pecuniary interest? Not seeing any. Um, that is good. And then adoption of the minutes. I need somebody to move to adopt the minutes of uh, April 22nd meeting. Uh, Andrea. And second it. Jim. And all in favor? Everybody's in favor. Yep, carried. Um, and having no delegations, we'll go to the business arising out of the minutes. Um, oh, all the empty storefronts, the directional signage, and um, the stone boat all are in still in progress. And so we'll get a report on the next at the next meeting. And so items of business, uh, public art policy review. Um, Jim or Andrew, did you want to speak on that? I, Jim. Andrew, and do you want to speak on it? I'll, uh, you go first and I'll join you. Um, I'm trying to think back to that uh, that time. We, uh, we, we met and went through the policy and uh, there were just some, some minor uh, things that we, we needed, that we thought needed adjusting. Um, and so have put those recommendations forward. Um, I think that's, um, I think that's all I have to say. <laughs> yeah. So go I'll ahead, just, Andrea. we, we did, uh, go through it, you know, quite thoroughly line by line, Shelly, Shell, who's not able to join us in our meeting here today, but she had some, you know, we all three of us had some really good recommendations. Uh, Victoria was also on the committee. And um, so basically it was a, you know, an opportunity to update it and make sure the language was current, et cetera. Um, and I'm not sure we didn't, we didn't provide a red line to, uh, to show the specific changes, did we? I'm just re reviewing my agenda here, sorry. There is an attached uh, copy of the policy on the agenda that has uh, the highlighted changes in yellow. Okay, so that's, yeah. So I just looked at the first one. So there's the changes. So yeah, so it was a good, good process, good team, one meeting, done. <laughs> Maybe I'll pass okay. the torch to Victoria if she wanted to add anything because Victoria was very helpful in that. No, I think, um, I mean, if anyone has any questions about the changes, they're, they're the highlighted changes in there, so. Okay, so um, if everybody's good and has no, oh, Pat? I just have one question. I think it's a, a really good effort and I think the changes are, are really good. Um, under 4.4, though, I'm just wondering about the name of the college now. Uh, the way it's worded now, it says Fleming College Halliburton School of the Arts and Design, rather than just Halliburton School of Heart, Art and Design. So I don't know whether we want to make that change now or not, but I think that's what they call themselves. Yes. It's, it's actually the Halliburton School of Art and then a plus sign, Design and Design. Right. Yes. So uh, I, that's a fairly minor change. I, th I think we can we can uh, put forward a motion with uh, with that edit. Thank thank you, Pat. That's eagle eye. <laughs> and staff okay. can make a clerical change. Um, yeah. That's no problem before we present it to council. Yeah. Okay. So I just need a motion to recommend the updated policy be approved by council. Or just, who wants to motion? I'll move it. Can I do it? Andrew, a motion. And uh, I need a seconder. I'll second it. Pat, Pat will second it and everybody yeah. in favor of it. Hands up, Every, okay, motion's carried. So the update has been approved. Um, okay, so, um, okay, so 4.2, the mural submitted recommendation, Jim. You want to speak to that? Okay, I will. Thank you. 
Uh, so a quick uh, report. Um, our, uh, our subcommittee uh, was struck uh, with three reps from the Cultural Resources Committee, uh, Victoria, uh, myself, and Councillor uh, Tammy Donaldson. We had uh, reps from uh, J.D. Hodgson Elementary School, Mike Van Vandenhagel, uh, teacher, uh, Caleb and Eric Erica from the grade seven and eight class at JDH. And we had a rep from the Halliburton Highlands Sports Hall of Fame, Paul Morissette. Uh, the mandate of the committee uh, was threefold. Um, the first was to establish criteria for recognition of the AJ LaRue Community Center mural wall. The criteria should recognize a very high standard of excellence in athletics and also remove any barriers to inclusion as outlined by the Human Rights Code. Uh, race, ancestry, place of origin, color, ethnic origin, citizenship, creed, sex, sexual orientation, gender identity, gender expression, age, marital status, family status, or disability. These criteria will be recommended to the Cultural Resources Committee and through this committee to Municipal Council. The second was to recommend candidates for recognition on the mural wall based on uh, who meet these criteria. This land uh, a list of candidates will be recommended to the Cultural Resources Committee and through this committee to Municipal Council. And the third was to make recommendations to the Cultural Resources Committee related to the process of choosing future candidates and the ongoing management of the mural wall. That was the mandate of the committee. Uh, our committee met uh, three, uh, three times, three, three, Friday, uh, three Friday mornings. Um, and in that time, we drafted a set of criteria uh, and policy for the mural wall as described uh, by the committee mandate. Um, we also, which we'll be uh, looking at um, today, we also received the recommendations and detailed background information from the JDH grade seven and eight class for Tally Williams and Leslie Tashlin to be honored on the mural wall. Uh, and we also created a process and nomination form for the nomination of future candidates for the mural wall. Uh, and I think our, uh, the, the policy which, which, uh, which we worked on uh, over those, those three weeks uh, is attached to the uh, agenda. And uh, Madam Chair, if I have, I have a, a, a resolution. Okay, go ahead. Uh, be it resolved that the Cultural Resources Committee recommend that Council adopt the policy to establish the eligibility criteria for an individual to be honored by a mural on the wall of the AJ LaRue Community Center. So uh, you're bringing the motion forward, so I need I'm a second. Bring the motion forward. And does anybody want to second that? Uh, motion? Uh, Anna, and then all in favor? Well, we probably need some discussion. Uh, do we need any discussion on that? Is Are there, there any, any questions or? Yeah. Jeff? You're mute, you Jeff. Uh, that never ends. Uh, yeah, I just want to say a uh, big thanks to the students, uh, JDH, the subcommittee and Jim Blake for the work on this policy. Um, I did have one question. Actually, sorry, I, I had two questions and comments with regards to the policy. Um, the first one, uh, the, nom uh, the policy notes that the nomination deadline is June 30th, where well as the, the form says that the nomination deadline is July 31st. So there's a discrepancy there that we uh, um, should discuss and maybe the committee can provide direction uh, to staff whether they want July 31st or June 30th. Um, the other question I had, um, and I, I think uh, the composition of the committee is great, but how would we determine the two students to be on that nomination review committee moving forward? Um, and those are my two questions. Okay, Jim. Um, I think, uh, Jeff, those two dates are discrepancy. Uh, you know, so I, I think it's the July 31st. And of course, this is, this is looking at future nominations uh, for people to go on the wall. So um, I think we were thinking if we had July 31st, then it would, that would come forward. The uh, Cultural Resources Committee would meet 
August 31st in August would strike a review committee. Uh, that review committee would meet, re report back to the cultural resources committee, go to council, um, and 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 go through through uh, through that process. Um, so I'm I'm thinking in terms of of getting students involved. If it comes to the um, the cultural resources committee in August, then a, a request can go to the schools um, at the beginning of September to, to have them uh, designate students for the committee. I think that that would be the, the process. Perfect, thank you. I just wanted to have that discussion so that there was a clear direction going forward. Thanks, Jim. Does, does that make sense? I'm just looking at the other committee members, Tammy, Victoria, does that make sense? I believe that's how. Yeah, that, that's um, what we discussed. So. Okay, thanks for that clarification, Jeff. Okay. Mayor Roberts. Thanks. You can call me Andrea in the meeting. That's okay. <laughs> um, and, and Jeff actually just uh, commented on the subcommittee. I really want to thank everybody, um, the Cultural Resource Committee, but also the subcommittee, mm -hmm. particularly to, to meet three times and take this, um, take this, you know, as, as seriously as you did, and to be as professional as you were. Um, we didn't have a policy before. They just got up through a, a you know, verbal recommendation and I've referenced it before from an anonymous donation to the municipality to do those. There was never an intention to be oversight to uh, not have other murals up. Their, their names were not proposed um, at the time. I know there was some reference in an email and uh, there has been some reference in the press too that 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 there was the the names of Leslie and, and Tally in 2012. I was on council in 2012, but that did not come to council. I was only aware of this on March 3rd when I received the letter from the uh, grade seven and eight class. So really, I it may seem painfully slow uh, process, but it's open and it's transparent and it's the way government works. And actually, this has been really fast because it's less than three months. We updated this meeting today uh, from normally our, our, we would have met on June 24th and we were meeting today in order for these recommendations to specifically get in time to be on a council, the DICER council agenda for the June 22nd meeting. So whatever the outcomes of the resolution that's on the floor and, and a future one that's coming. Um, so yeah, thank you to the subcommittee. Thank you to the students who were sent the original letter and uh, thank you to Tally and Leslie and congratulations on achieving such an amazing accomplishment in their sports. And um, I'm only sorry that we didn't know and didn't recognize them any earlier. So thank you. Okay. Um, has anybody else got any comments before I do the seconder? I don't think I got to the seconder, did I, Danielle? I, I think someone did. Yeah. Oh, somebody did? Yep. Okay, so I just need, uh, if everybody's good with it and has read it over, then, yeah, An Andrea? Oh, yeah, we're going to, we're going to, uh, yeah, I'm all in favor. All in favor of the policy, everybody's favor, so carried, and that is a go. All right. Um, so the next thing, Jim? Okay. Um, the next, the next is uh, our, our the, the next piece of the mandate was to recommend candidates for recognition on the mural wall, um, uh, who uh, who meet these criteria. So, um, the the athletes uh, Leslie Williams, sorry Leslie Tashlin, my my apologies, the first Halliburton resident to represent Canada the Olympics, and Tally Williams the first student from Halliburton Highlands Secondary School to play in the Canadian Football League were brought forward by the grade seven and eight uh, students from JD8 Hodgson Elementary. The grade seven and eight students submitted all of the requisite materials for their nomination. Given that these individuals are and were eminently qualified to be honored as sports heroes on the mural wall and that these athletes were not considered when previous decisions were made about individuals being honored, I would like to move the following resolution. Uh, and 
sorry, it's, it's a long one. Uh, whereas the purpose of the A.J. LaRue mural wall is, recognized, is to recognize individuals who spent some of their formative years attending school and are being involved in athletics in the municipality of Dysart et al. And who went on to achieve excellence as athletes in an organized sport at an elite level and who serve as positive role models and an inspiration for local youth. Uh, and that the athletes, Leslie Tashlin, the first Halliburton resident to represent Canada the Olympics and Tally Williams, the first student from Halliburton Highland Secondary School to play in the Canadian Football League, meet all of the criteria for an athlete to be recognized on the A.J. LaRue mural wall, be it resolved that the Cultural Resources Committee recommend to council that uh, Leslie Tashlin and Tally Williams be selected to be honored on the A.J. LaRue mural wall. My apologies for the length of that. All right, so that's my, res my resolution. Okay, so you motioned that and I need a seconder for that. Anna, a second that. And everybody's in favor. Uh, okay. Now, sorry, be, uh, just, just uh, maybe I can, I, I just wanna speak to the motion before we, uh, uh, have the vote if that's okay. Um, just give me a second here. My apologies. So I just have to find my file here. The, um, the students um, at JDH uh, put an enormous amount of time uh, undertaking the research and uh, verifying all of their information and facts. Um, the students also, uh, at the end of the, uh, all, all the nomination information, uh, they, 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 sh they wrote short little essays on uh, why uh, these, um, uh, these athletes uh, should be honored on the wall. So if I may, Madam Chair. Um, Leslie Tashlin. Uh, grace and strength is what comes to mind when we look at the picture of Leslie jumping over a hurdle. Wow. This snapshot speaks for itself and leaves us nothing but amazed. Yes, Leslie Tashin was the fastest 100 meter hurdler in 1995 in Canada. And seeing her for real would have been more, even more impressive from what we heard from the people that were lucky uh, to experience watching her train competing on television or participating in one of her need for speed clinics she coached at uh, Halliburton High Love Secondary School back in the 90s. This Halliburton grown athlete was already an officer champion, provincial level competition for track and field and badminton during her time at, at high school. No wonder she became the 1987 a Female Athlete of the Year. Leslie still holds the 100 meter hurdles record at uh, Halliburton Highland Secondary School after 34, after 34 years, exclamation mark. Leslie went on uh, participating in six major international competitions, the Pan Am Games twice, the Commonwealth Games twice, the Francophone uh, Games, and the, uh, the greatest stage of them all, the Olympic Games, where she represented Canada in two events in 1996. That definitely deserves another wow. She was in fact the first Halliburtonian to go to the Olympics. At 27 years old, demonstrating a lot of hard work and perseverance. An additional fact is that is also impressive that she could have combined being an elite athlete and a dedicated mother. When we look at Leslie, we could easily identify with her as she grew up here, ran on the same track as us, went to the same schools as us, was a role model to her siblings, and loved sport.
But above all, the grandest wow is how an athlete so talented can be so humble. She already has her name stamped as one of the great, greatest of Canada's greatest hurdlers. We believe Leslie has not been recognized by her hometown as she should be. So as a class, we have advocated for her and received support na nationwide from organizations like Athletics Canada, among others. If we could be inspired to identify with one local girl on the wall of heroes, it would be her. We are so proud of her. Let's wow everyone by putting the combination of grace and strength on the wall. So that's the uh, essay on, uh, on Leslie. And uh, the essay on Tally. Tally Williams was the first Halliburton student, student to become a professional football player, paving the road for the future football players from this town. We heard that football back in the day was the sport at Halliburton Highlands Secondary School. Even Principal Gary Broman was the football coach. It seemed that Tally, freshly back in Halliburton, was able to switch from competitive level volleyball and basketball to football and track and field in an incredibly smooth manner, establishing records still unbeaten to this day at Halliburton Highland Secondary School. When we see Tally, we see an upbeat, versatile athlete who is not only competent at picking up any support he encountered, but also an athlete who is able to learn the sport in a very short period of time and show it above average ability. He started football at uh, Halliburton Highland Secondary School, played it again at the University of Waterloo and went on to signing professional contract in record time. That's the first wow. We also see a well-balanced student and athlete being academic and athletic and excelling at both doesn't come without hard work and talent. That's the second wow. We also see a brilliant problem solver. After retiring from professional football, Tally used his combination of academic and athletic talents to invent engineering wonders that could make other players better in their sports. Tally's YouTube channel has more than 4.7 million views of his tutorials. Growing up in Halliburton, surrounded by fresh, clean water sources certainly also had an impact on him. And he works hard to save our beautiful planet by using engineering brilliance to treat extremely impaired water sources. Yes, we are already at the third wow. Tally's brilliance, talent, and constant growth are obvious to so many. Among them, the university he attended, the leagues he belonged to, the people he touched, even a famous football player like Pinball Clemens. So it is time for the town he grew up in to give them the celebration he deserves. Tally inspires us. He is one of us. Wow, those were awesome essays. Very good. Very good. That, that was amazing. They did an awesome job on that. Um, if anybody, ha if nobody has any comments, then I think that, did I, Andrea? Just while we're still on this topic, I went back to the policy that we just passed a few minutes ago. And um, so one of the things is funding the mural. And in anticipation of this recommendation from the Cultural Resource Committee going to council on June 22nd, in anticipation of council accepting the recommendation, um, perhaps we should be preemptively uh, planning a, representation, a representative from the Cultural Resource Committee to begin the funding process. Uh, just a thought that we should maybe, if someone wants to rep. So if you go under the policy, it's. I, I'm just thinking, why well, wait to the August meeting week for that? And thank and you, I, Jim, for reading those stories. Like, wow, and amazing. Uh, uh, 
uh, uh, Madam Chair, if I, uh, if I may, there's actually two more parts to this motion, which I, uh, I, I didn't read out. So if I, if I may. Um, so, and furthermore, that the, hey, thank you, Andrea, for, for that nudge. Uh, and furthermore, that the Cultural Resources Committee undertake the pro procedure as outlined in the policy to select artists, identify costs, and initiate the fundraising for the creation of the murals. Uh, and uh, that as, uh, whereas two athletes have been recommended uh, to be honored on the AJ LaRue mural wall, be it resolved that the Cultural Resources Committee recommend to council that a request for quotations be prepared to solicit proposals for, uh, from artists for the artwork for murals to honor these athletes and that a review committee be struck by the Cultural Resources Committee to review the RFQs. Um, so I, I would like to, if I may, uh, just sort of withdraw my first motion and put those three those three things together as as one motion. As one motion, okay. Yeah. Yeah, and, and everybody's agreeable to that. The the seconder. Who, who's yeah Anna? Okay, and everybody's in favor of of adding all those to all three of them together. Andrea, Andrea. Oh yes, everybody. Yeah, everybody's good. Okay, uh, that was carried. Because the motion came from the, from the floor and from Jim, and it wasn't sort of included in our agenda, but uh, Jim, very well I think, I, I think actually it is uh, it is in the agenda, uh, Andrea. Perfect. Um, under uh, the staff. Um, oh, you're you're right. It isn't. Not not right now. So I'm just thinking. Okay, I'll let Danielle wants to speak to this. It's under a section four point three nominations under recommendations. Yeah, Danielle, there's not, there's no, um, uh, there's no link there. What I'm just going to suggest, because it it was lengthy, wordy, and a little detailed, which is fine. But perhaps normally we don't get the minutes out till later. But maybe Danielle, because you'll have received Jim's nomination or a resolution there. In this case, perhaps these minutes could come out fairly quickly, so that we is that okay? Okay. Yep. That sounds good. Um, okay. So, um, Jim, the nomination package, do we, I have, I think, uh, I think, I think probably that, that last, um, resolution, uh, des deserves a large round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> How do we do that? <laughs> <laughs> there was a there was a lot of work in that and that was that was so good in such a short amount of time the students were behind this 100 percent, and uh, um, the committee stepped up to the plate it was awesome um so um after our round of applause, um, may, maybe it's uh, uh, something once the murals are on uh, that can happen. Um, so the next, so the nom the next uh, motion is for the nomination. The nomination package is that. On? Do you want to speak yes. to that? Yes. Um, uh, uh, thank you, Tammy. Um, so the, the committee also, uh, uh, that obviously, uh, that Leslie and, um, and, and Tally, um, that we have, we have nominated, nominated, uh, and recommend them for, uh, for the mural wall. Um, but we also wanted there to be an opportunity for future nominations, um, because you know we uh, we expect that there are other people out there, or will be other people out there, who um, meet the criteria and should be honored on the uh, on the mural wall. And so we prepared a um, a, a nomination uh, process and uh, information sheet, and um, and also a, a, a nomination form, uh, which can be made available. Uh, to the public, and the first uh, deadline for nominations would be July 31st, 
uh, 2000 and, 20, uh, and 21. So that uh, nomination form has been included in your, uh, uh, in your package with the, with the agenda. So let's see, what's the resolution here? Um, be it resolved that the Cultural Resources Committee recommend council approve and implement an application process and form for future nominations for individuals to be honored by mural on the wall of the AJ LaRue Community Center. All right, so Jim motioned that and I need a second note to that unless there's comments first. Is there somebody that wants to second that one? I have a comment. Yep, but Anna. after the seconder is okay. Um, oh. However you want to do it. <laughs> go, go for it. Um, I'm just wondering about specifically saying Google Drive or Dropbox. Um, like who is this being submitted to? Um, I, I think we might want to leave more room for if the actual tool changes, we don't need to change the nomination form. I know the county is going to Nextcloud. Um, or maybe we want to use a Canadian company like Sync or something. So just just to comment on that process oh, oh, question. But. Okay, sure. And uh, what would you suggest in terms of wording? Um, through a link, something about cloud-based, just a cloud-based file transfer service. <laughs> so digitally through a cloud-based file transfer okay. service. And then hopefully they could uh, contact whoever and find out what they would prefer to use. Okay, I, I, I mean, I, I think that that makes sense. I, I think that's just a, it's taking out two um, a product names and putting in a you know broader definition of that. that definitely, I think that um, it would be dated if we use the specifics for right now, and we want it to be generic depending on the time frame. Yeah. So I think that's a great idea, Anna. Um, and the, that's a, you yeah. can do that. The uh, nomination, um, the nominations will come to the, uh, I mean, right now we've got uh, the nominations will come to, to Jeff as the uh, director of planning and land information. And then Jeff will, will bring those forward to the cultural resources uh, committee. That, okay, that's, that's a process. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, which is great. Uh, I was just going to suggest some simplified wording. Maybe we could just say that please provide a digital and hard copy to, to the following. Um, that leaves it very wide open. You get a hard copy, uh, digital files that in whatever format of the day, which is changing so fast. So uh, just a suggestion for, uh, for consideration. Yep, that, that sounds good. Does that work with you, Jim? Yeah. That, Anna, that's that would be sufficient too. Yep. Yeah, okay. All right. So we can make that change. And I'm I'm looking for a seconder. I think on that. Oh, I had a question too. Is it important Sorry, right? to say exterior wall? Um, is it important to say that it's on the outside of the building, or does it matter? There is a fair bit of wall space on that building. <laughs> yes. Uh, and, I, I think Lori, the, I mean, the mural wall is just, is defined right now as the exterior wall. So, so it's the entire walls exterior of the building. So not just confined to that one space across from Kino FM. I, I think once, uh, you know, spaces are filled, then that will be a further discussion on how that gets okay. done. Okay. No yeah. problem. Yeah. yeah. Just wondering. Withdrawn. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think perhaps by that time we'll have a new building. Okay. All right. So if everybody's good with it, with a minor change. Yeah, Jeff. Yeah. Sorry, thanks. Uh, and I, well, I think it's great that the committee reviewed that nomination form on its own. Um, are there any objections uh, from the committee to include that nomination form as part of the policy as it goes towards council? Uh, as a schedule I, to the policy, yeah. uh, so just one document uh, and to, instead of two standalone documents. Andrea? I, yeah, I like what Jeff just said, that it's a schedule to the policy. 
if that's okay with the, I wasn't involved with this, but it makes yeah. sense to how other things work. Victoria? Sorry, what does that mean? <laughs> Well, Thank it, you, it, basically, <laughs> instead of taking them forward to council as two separate standalone documents, um, when it proceeds to council at the end of the month, it would proceed that uh, that the committees recommended that council approve these documents, but uh, they would be combined as one document with the policy, and then the nomination form is an attached document to that policy. Okay, so that's just a fancy word for an appendix. Yep. Okay. Uh, schedule two and appendix. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Just wanted to make sure I understood what we were saying. <laughs> Okay, uh, so if everybody's good with that, I think I'm looking for a seconder on this. So if somebody wants to second it, uh, Lori. And then is everybody in favor of the recommendation? Hands all in favor, so carried. And that will go to council. Um, okay. So, um, Sam Slick on the 4.3 uh, subcommittee update. Is there any update, Andrea? No? <laughs> no I wasn't on the, I wasn't on that subcommittee. I was only on the public art policy, I believe. Uh, who else? I think Kate's, I think Kate's gonna speak to that. Yes, Kate, you're <laughs> on. It's curious, Lori, I thought you were going to speak to that. <laughs> Oh, well, I can. I, I'm happy to. We didn't decide. You know what, Lori, why, why don't you take it away? And if there's anything else um, that needs to be added in, the rest of us who are on the subcommittee, we certainly, we certainly can. We can, uh, we can all work together. But Lori, why don't you, uh, why don't you take the lead on this? Okay. So um, we, we met online and discussed it. Uh, some people couldn't be there, but what... But in the end, I think seemed to be a, a good way to proceed was to suggest that this, the small parkette down by across from the high school called Sam Slick Park right now be enfolded into the Head Lake Park plan because it doesn't seem to be part of it now. Uh, and then when all the different signage and the wayfinding, et cetera, et cetera, goes in there that that would probably that would be an appropriate time for us to tell the story of not only the naming of the park which is a very small blip in the history of the region but also of all, so many other things about the five lake chain the the shoreline all kinds of things even going back to you know pre uh, certainly pre-contact, but maybe even uh, geological type change too through the eras. So that would be, that That seemed like a good idea. Um, I, I don't think everyone has weighed in on it. I don't, I know Anna hasn't weighed in on it, but we also, uh, Kate was going to speak with someone um, from Rotary. So I don't, Kate, maybe you could describe that. The other thing I learned having spent a bit of time down there is it, uh, their sign was the, the big bronze sign was erected in 1963 by the Ontario government. And so uh, hard to say, but in my opinion, there may be some higher powers on the naming of things that we should be looking to. Does that, uh, everybody could have a, a way in here now. Well, and just to um, provide a, a bit of update in terms of the, the connection with Rotary. So yes, certainly when Sam Slick Park was uh, first established in the 1960s, um, Halberton Rotary had a, a key role, um, really was the, uh, the lead on the establishment of the park. And so we felt um, in terms of this subcommittee, that it was very important to make sure that um, as conversations move forward, that Rotary does um, does get included in those discussions and, and has a and has a say in how um, how these discussions progress forward. So um, I've reached out 
um, to Ted Brandon, who is the, the current head of Halberton Rotary, and just mentioned to him that this discussion was coming up today and that certainly we would loop Rotary in on discussions as it moves forward. So I'm sure that Rotary will um, talk a bit um, about it at their own table as well. And I'm sure that they will also have thoughts about how this uh, might progress forward if there is a, um, if there's a, an interest in um, renaming the, uh, the area known as Sam Slick Park or incorporating it um, into uh, the, the larger Head Lake Park as well and what um, interpretive signage might look like in the future. So I mentioned it to Rotary, uh, but the, yeah, the, um, you know, making sure that we loop them in, it's, it's only fair um, to include them in that, that conversation moving forward as well. Okay. All right. Did Anna, did you have anything? Did you want um, to I was just going to say we met twice and the committee can correct me if it changed the second time because I could only make the first meeting. Um, but I believe just to summarize our recommendations would be to enfold Slam Slick Park into Head Lake Park um, and to install interpretive signage with the history of the area. So just to, to sum summarize that into it. Yeah. Okay. So, Andrea? So um, Lori made a point of reference because of the, of the sign uh, and it's got provincial government logo stuff on it. What, what, just to clarify, Lori, were you saying like we shouldn't just go and pull that plaque down without checking with through staff if we're permitted to do that or? Um, I, I honestly don't know because I noticed that there, the Victoria Railway sign is also gone from Head Lake Park, which was in front of the Rails and Gallery before. So there may be some reason for those, for that. And, and uh, now the Ontario, the Provincial Department of Archaeological and Historical Sites is, is uh, defunct, I think, and, and has been rolled into something else around heritage. So it, it sounds like it might be worth checking, um, checking on that, <laughs> uh, just because 1963 was a long time ago. And yeah, I, I don't think you'd go taking stuff down. But, but there is a precedent. One has been taken down now, and I'm not sure the cause of that one, but it just spending time down there, I was observing there's a, an abundance of signage, and it is not, it should be reconciled. And a Head Lake Park, the Head Lake Park plan would be a great way to do that. Okay, hey, Andrea? So um, it might be a little tad confusing calling it Head Lake Park or we call it Head Lake Park West or something, because even just for, for park staff, I'm thinking because even now we, we, we all say Head Lake Park and then we see the Rotary Beach side. So we still even have to clarify that. Were you planning on meeting again is, or is this your verbal? Because there was nothing in the report. It says it'll just be an update, what you're doing now verbally. Were you planning to meet one more time to have a written update? Would that be possible? Kate just mentioned that um, it sounds like there's a few loose ends, whether you contact staff or whether you contact the Rotary Club. I, I prefer a written report that we can actually adopt as a resolution, just like we did er, earlier topics, and then that come to a council meeting. I'm not trying to make you do more work, but. Well, in, 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 in that um, we don't have the findings from Ted um, or any information from him, we, we should do a written report. Yeah. yeah, we could do and that from the I don't, um, there is, correct me, there's no, if, if the unfolding into the whole Head Lake Park plan is acceptable, then that's a very long timeline in any case. Vic Victoria? Um, so I, I just wanted to make a comment about the signage. So I, I went and investigated the signage that's down there. So the top plaque, is the one that is from the government. Yeah. The bottom plaque on the stone is the rotary contribution. So there, I believe they're two separate signs. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the top one potentially could stay. And then we would just be talking about changing that plaque that is on that one, because that's the one that rotary gave. 
Okay. Uh, so now uh, we're getting into the nitty gritty here. I think that it should go back to the committee then so that we can make some concrete recommendations. Thank you. I, that would be that would be helpful for us as the rest of the Cultural Resource Committee, and especially when it comes back to council and Tim, the chair, Tammy, and then myself have to sort of not necessarily support, but we should at least be able to answer any explanation uh, that other fellow councillors have. So if you guys don't mind meeting at least one more time uh, and then putting it, making sure that it's uh, on our next uh, August agenda and with a, with a written recommendation, that'd be awesome. Thanks for the work to date. Jeff? Yes, thank you. Um, and once, uh, it might be advisable to contact, uh, I'm not sure if it came through administration or whether it was through uh, um, Parks and Rec, but just to reach out to them just to see about the logistics of perhaps combining those parks and, and updating that park plan and, and just see what would be involved in that. Um, so it might not hurt to reach out to whether it's Andrew, Andrea or Tamara and just see what would happen there. And I'm happy to help facilitate that if you'd like. Can, can I add uh, one little thing, Tammy, um, yeah. to the committee? When you do meet again, taking a sign down that says Sam Slick Park isn't actually even though addressing the issue. It's great. Okay, now we're not going to call it that anymore. But if you can also include in your recommendations, is there any sort of acknowledgement that we should, if that's the recommendation that we could be making, why we're making this change, et cetera, and just, I, just address that, I'm just not pulling the sign out of the ground. I don't think that was our recommendation was just pulling no. the sign out. No. It would be helpful for council, thank you, to, to um, if, if there's some kind of acknowledgement or something further that we could be doing as a municipality. Yeah, to articulate our reasoning. Thank right. you. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, so it'll be on the agenda again for the August one. And uh, you guys will have another meeting to come up with answers. Okay. Um, supporting cultural, Lori, were you, did you wanna to speak to that or the supporting cultural organizations? Um, but I don't think that there was anything. There's nothing to report. Yeah, okay. Go shopping tomorrow if they have a retail element. <laughs> okay, that's great. Best thing um, we can do. Okay. Um, budget. Um, who, who wanted to, Danielle, did you want to speak on the budget? Sure, I can. Okay. Uh, so I can say that the sponsorship for the sculpture site for the downtown Halliburton sculpture exhibition was paid. Um, there was a note from our finance department that the 2019 sculpture wasn't paid for uh, as of date. So I'm going to do some research to ensure we didn't pay for it. And if not, it will have to come out of the 2021 budget. Uh, other than that, the two attachments show the proposed budget still, as well as our expenses to date. Okay, thank you. And does anybody have any comments on that? We're all good with it. Okay. Oh, Jim, Jim, that was close. Jim, you're on mute. Uh, we ha have some unallocated un funds related to our budget. And, you know, at what point, you know, we're, we're in, when are we now? June, halfway through the year. <laughs> So do we want to be do we want to be thinking about as a committee um, in terms of other things that we want to be doing with with those funds? Uh, is there is there anything that has come up uh, so far in the discussions today that we uh, we should be allocating money to? Andrea, contribute to a mural, perhaps. <laughs> Sorry, I just like seriously, but so maybe we wait to what council says and. Uh, that, that is truly a thought. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm saying it smiling, but I mean it in all sincerity. Uh, but that would have to come at our August meeting. Okay. Um, I don't. So if everybody's I'm, good with that, there's no resolution or anything. So we'll just can put that on the agenda again um, to still allocate funds. Okay, all right. 
Um, so, Excuse me, quite, Abby. Yep, yep. Um, sorry, just to clarify, did uh, the committee want staff to put that on the agenda for August um, to discuss whether to al uh, allocate funds towards uh, the mural wall? Andrea? I just meant that we should discuss our budget again in August. Okay. But keep that in mind. Okay. Um, okay, the Art Exhibit Welcome Center Arts Council. Pat, you want to report? Uh, <clears throat> so one of the committees of the Arts Council is called Art in Public Spaces. And over the last, I'm gonna say uh, five or, well, somewhere between five and 10 years, we have been arranging for art exhibits and partnering with uh, community groups uh, so that they are exhibits in public spaces. So for instance, um, in the past, well, for instance, with Dyer's Arts 150, this group organized the Dyer's Art Trail and there was art installations throughout the municipality of Dyer's Art. Uh, the committee is also thinking of a broader uh, project next year that might be countywide. So what we're doing is we're linking our members who might want to show their work with interested public venues that uh, would like to show work, perhaps attract people into the work or at least into the uh, venue or at least get that opportunity for the public to interact with local artists. Um, all the artists that are displayed are members of the uh, Arts Council and um, that's, that is one of the criteria. Uh, when we uh, organize a show, uh, the Arts Council actually puts up the display, takes down the display, and the artists have their own insurance on their work. So the uh, uh, venue operator doesn't have uh, any obligations in terms of the work or the insurance on the work. <clears throat> so uh, at, when we were meeting this, uh, this month, we thought perhaps that it might be worthwhile to approach the municipality, see if um, the municipality was interested in a show in the Welcome Center. I know it's a very small space inside, but it is a very public space. And since art is uh, uh, part of our, our signature as a, as a community, we just thought this might be one way to showcase the uh, talents within the community. Um, so I guess that would be it. Okay, um, so the, um, mm -hmm. I have a question. Okay. Lori? Oh. Yeah, um, two things, I guess. One is, Real Zend has been asking about this since October, since mid-October, and was asked to approach staff about it, which we did, and we're told that there wasn't gonna be much space and that um, we would be given some consideration though. And that hasn't happened. And also at our last cultural planning meeting, so I am speaking out on behalf of the public art gallery, as opposed to members of the arts council. And um, also the, it struck, I, I seem to recall that there was gonna be a tour of a virtual tour of the information center or the welcome center for the committee so that we could take a look at what the possibilities were, but we are waiting on that. So I just, uh, I just wanna say there's someone, there's another organization very interested and on the okay. table about that space. Okay, and, Andrew. And not as a selling venue. Um, I don't know, uh, art and public spaces, the, these wouldn't be for sale, I don't, I doubt, but uh, neither would Rails End. Andrew? Well, I'll just answer about, uh, to, if I could, to respond as far as the tour. Well, we couldn't, we, we couldn't uh, do that. We couldn't even do it with all the council. We had to do it one-on-one -on -one and a few councils. No, yeah, the virtual tour. No, I think it was, we were gonna have a virtual tour, but in any case, it's, it's certainly not ready. So it'll be interesting to see. No. And, and I thought our discussion re regarding your, um, your proposal was for the caboose. No, no, completely separate item. Okay, so I haven't had October, talked about that. Yeah, October 15th, I think I initiated okay. that. Yeah. Okay, so I don't recall that. But um, anyway, I just thought it would be, it's worth bringing up at this point. But yeah. Okay. Okay, 
Uh, Pat? Uh, sorry, uh, Laurie, I, I didn't realize that the Rails End Gallery had already approached the municipality on that, so there was no intent really to stop a step on anybody's oh, no. toe. And no, I, I didn't, didn't want to clarify. Yeah, <laughs> I did want to clarify, though, that uh, these art pieces that are installed are actually for sale. So if that makes a uh, difference to the municipality, um, this is an opportunity for artists that who show their work to also um, uh, sell their work if, if there's interest. Um, but uh, again, uh, just wanted to make sure all that was on the table before uh, the discussion went any further. Is okay. there an opportunity, I mean, if we actually have show space within the um, Welcome Center, um, then is there an opportunity for the art and public spaces to do it, uh, you know, one, whatever the time frame is, you know, one month and then the Rails End Gallery to do it another month. Uh, and it gives an opportunity for even a broader uh, selection of artists to uh, uh, potentially have their have their work shown there. I mean, there there hasn't there isn't a lot of space. Actually, if you if you go and drop off brochures, Lori, you get to see the inside. I of did. The, no, see, I did. I, I see did. See the actually, inside of the space. I don't think there's actually an allocation for any kind of space, whether it's a display case or anything on the wall. There is a, a television screen, like a video screen, and I think we're just waiting to hear what the possibilities might be for that for organizations and commercial operations, you know, to use it or to submit material, but I'm not sure how that's gonna work. Andrea. So um, Pat had sent this to me, so I was aware of this before this agenda and, and also did mention to her that there's limited wall space because of doors and glass and windows and bathroom doors and, there, and the TV that Laurie just referenced. So there isn't a lot of space. I do like the idea. I was very supportive when the Arts Council did the Dice Art Trail uh, before. And in fact, the beautiful painting that was hung in the municipal office was sold rather quickly because it was, it was a, a great painting. Um, so uh, I was not aware, Laurie, that, that you were looking at all so that the conversation, if it was with me, I, I have no recollection. I do recall. No, no, it was with, it was with staff. It was staff. with Laura, okay. Andrea. Um, I inquired what the process would be and and uh, was told that there wouldn't be space probably, but that would be, you know, included if okay. there were. Yeah. So, this, so this is a request that's on the table today. So I think because there is a recommendation, we should either just deal with this request and either make a recommendation to council or not, or, you know, I, we, I, I hear what you're saying that you also said you had a request in, but I think we should, this is a different situation and trying to get art that, uh, you know, maybe isn't like you have, a, you have a gallery right beside where people can go in and see the paintings on the wall. We, uh, so I, I, anyway, I like this idea, but I, and I would support it. Um, so just a couple of things. I think, first of all, we should determine whether or not there is space or isn't space, because if there isn't space, then the discussion's moot. Um, but sharing, sharing um, what am I saying, on a rotating basis is not an issue either. Uh, we already do that at Highlands Brewery with, um, uh, the Forest Festival, uh, you know, our, our shows have a limited time. They're, they're up for a, a limited time and then they're either refreshed or, or another organization comes in and, and does a display. So um, uh, what you suggested, Laurie, of sharing the opportunity, I think is, is also a, a worthwhile one and also quite doable. Um, yeah. At the brewery, we tend to go for six month periods, but that's only because um, uh, that seems to be the uh, cycle of the um, of the tourist season, um, but you know, certainly a shorter period or a longer period is is quite. Uh, you know, we're open to discussing anything. I think you're right, Pat. Um, that the, it's a moot point until we know how much space there might be available. And at this point, I think what I was told was the only space would be for brochures. So that if there's only space for brochures and an audiovisual component, then we better find out. Oh, Jeff? 
I was just going to suggest I'd be happy to follow up with uh, staff internally in their space, and then I can report back next month. Okay. Okay. And also, um, what is the purpose of the TV in there? Does it have uh, Andrea? Do you know, like, yeah. why is it is it hanging from the wall? Uh, the wall or the ceiling? Down. Yes, it's it's to use as an interactive tool, uh, Wi-Fi connect, so you can interactive maps so staff can show, you know point and click Google things up. It's, it's a, a monitor. It can rotate different things as Lori talked about, mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's, it's meant as an interactive tool that for people to use. Uh, okay, which is a great idea. Um, were they ever thinking of putting advertising on there or artwork? Not advertising and okay. not artwork as far as I was aware, but we would have to check with Alyssa and Andrea Mueller on on the specifics of how and maybe Kate knows how that's being used. Um, well, actually, more to address the the question of space um, in the the welcome center. Um, Andrea and I were actually talking about this yesterday, and um, she's very much of the the mind that there there really probably isn't enough space, um, especially when you factor in. Um, accessibility and um, you know, all the, the other factors of how the, that small space there needs to be used. And there's limited wall space, there's lots of doors, there's, there's gonna be brochure racks and, and whatnot. Um, so you know, if, if artwork was to go in there, um, you know, we'd probably only be talking you know, one or two pieces, which doesn't, you know, doesn't necessarily constitute a, a show in that kind of way. And then how are the decisions made about who gets their piece in there in particular and, and things like that. So yeah, it, truth be told, it may be a, a bit of a moot point because there's, there's not much wall space to spare. There really isn't. That's, that's what uh, I heard from Andrea. Hey, Jeff. I just wanted to ask the, ask the committee if they wanted staff to follow up uh, internally, whether um, there would be consideration not for the TV for some sort of showing during a screensaver. So when it's not being used in, in, as interactive, um, it defaults to a screensaver. So that might be an opportunity to display some sort of art or I don't know what else. That's, that's a bit beyond me, but uh, I can follow up if the committee likes. I. I I don't know, uh, well, I'll ask about the rest of the committee, but I think that's an awesome idea that when you first walk in, uh, nobody is using the screen. So it could be portraying uh, different art, pictures of the art, and um, it would be a promotion for sure of the art in the area. Um, and then you can just, if it's a touch screen, it just touches off to go to the maps. But when nobody's uh, using it, but they're in there, um, that would be a great way to make it more colorful, I guess, in there, since there is no room for art. But what does everybody else think? Jeff's asking if we want to ask. <laughs> Pat? I, I think it's great, oh. because there were, I remember the, there were um, some, and also of other activities, too, uh, things like that guided things that places like yours outdoors or the Wolf Center are doing. People are attracted to um, moving mm -hmm. audio and video and stuff. I, I wanted to say, because I think I came out maybe a little strong there, but <laughs> yes, talking to Andrea, uh, or to respond to Andrea's thing, yeah, there is a gallery here, and that's a great opportunity for all local artists um, to show and, and in fact sell their work here, and so we're always welcome, and, and Pat, you know that too, and I think that mm -hmm. I want to make the Arts Council pretty clear on that we've been doing that for a long time here so we want to be supportive of local artists and we've got a facility right next to the Welcome Center so bring it on it's great. Pat did you want to say? No I, I was just going to say I think the screensaver is a, is a good idea if I mean I don't know what the technicalities of behind that are but but uh, certainly that uh, allows you the opportunity to show uh, if we have a moving screen, a continual screen, a wide variety of artists and a wide variety of art forms that might not necessarily be suited to being even displayed in a space because we always run into that problem that they're certainly that their pieces are too big 
or they're too fragile to be in a space. And so having it on as a screensaver allows us to have that variety in the kind of artwork that is shown and from different venues as uh, Lori pointed out. Okay, so is it general consensus for to ask Jeff to look into the details of making that happen and report back at the next in August? Everybody's good with that. Yeah, I, I'm just Tammy and Renee. I'm just wondering yeah. if if it is something as simple as a scrolling screen, not too quick, but that 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 uh, the Arts Council could submit some pictures high resolution, high quality pictures to be part of that while well, the interactive uh, screen is not being used. Um, I, let's not wait till August if that's the decision that we're going and, and pretty much make the assumption that there isn't wall space for an actual physical piece of art, but that let's try this and, and if uh, Andrew Mueller and Alyssa, who are the staff down there, are able to do that technology that they already have our approval to do that how does everybody feel about that one? Um, uh, the only comment I have is that uh, uh, our, our process is not a, uh, I mean, it's a fast in the sense that we can probably get this within a month or a month and a half, but we actually put out a uh, request for proposals to our membership and then they respond and then it's a juried process before it actually goes up. So um, not a juried process, but it's, it, there is a committee that uh, makes a decision, I'll put it that way. Um, and so it, you know, to be able to get those high quality, uh, I mean, certainly we do have lots of uh, pictures of artwork and we can provide you samples of what it can be, but I think we would probably want to put that out to our membership, um, as a, as an opportunity, as opposed to actually just selecting without their input. Can I follow up, Tammy? Yeah, which, you follow up. which, which is great, which I sort of assumed, but why wait to come back to our committee to say, go ahead and do that? I think if the technology is there and Jeff can find that out in a week or two, then you start the ball rolling okay. as opposed to coming back to this committee for an actual uh, approval. Does that well, make then, more clear sense? I'm going to insist that RailZen be allowed to do the same. Yeah. yeah. May I um, way, way in here? <laughs> like this Probably. is a bit weird. Yeah. So. <laughs> Sorry, That's okay. I just assumed that the, the intent was that both your organization and our organization would be submitting photos that, as I yeah. say, there's, there's uh, this, this, this uh, format allows for a, a wide variety of uh, participation. Yeah. I, uh, I'm going to suggest, I mean, A, that it's, a, that it is a curated process. It's just, uh, you know, as, as Pat mm -hmm. was talking about, um, you know, just wearing my sculpture forest hat. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> Get in there. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, we would love to have images from the sculpture forest up there as well. So basically it's dis it's displaying art in dice art. Yeah. So if if we come up with that theme, uh, you know, in, and we do have art in dice art. Uh, so, um, so it's displaying art in dice art. And then we have contributions from the sculpture forest from the um arts council and from the rails end um the three of us or designates thereof could you know figure out a curated process to do to do this mm -hmm. uh, which would be a lot of fun to do um, mm -hmm. and uh so the I, I think the steps are a that we need to run this by um whoever is responsible for that screen and say, we, we would like to propose this. And if the answer is yes, then the three of us will get together and we will, we'll make, we'll make it happen. Um, you know, it's quite possible that, you know, the museum also would be, you know, it's art and artifacts in dice art. Why not? And then we can all, uh, uh, you know, uh, yeah. uh, participate in that. Jeff, did you have a comment? Yeah, great discussion. Uh, I think this uh, this does merit an agenda item uh, to come back um, because there are, there are potentially other organizations that might want to get involved too. But I think the first step is uh, finding out who's who's uh, controls the screen 
um, and I can talk to them and, and certainly advise them that the, the committee's uh, supporting this idea and proposing this idea and see what their thoughts are. And uh, maybe by, I know it's a long time from now, we're kind of missing those summer months, but come back in August with, uh, with a, have a big discussion on it. Um, I just, do you see adventure in with your art? <laughs> <laughs> just makes it yeah. yes. well, exciting uh, to watch with your photography, art. To photography is also art. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, like there's so. so many possibilities there on how we could display Halliburton. In general, it would be an awesome opportunity. So I do think it, Jeff, if you could put it on the agenda and then each could could have some feedback. Uh, um, I, do, I don't like it that it's in August and we're missing June and July, but um, I, I guess the main thing is just to find out who controls that, that monitor. And, um, and maybe it's just, whoever controls that monitor, we send them, the people can send them uh, stuff that they could put up on the monitor and maybe it's them or is it more detailed and has to come to this um, committee? Those are all good questions. So- We, uh, we could certainly, sorry, Tammy, we could certainly okay. ex expedite the process by, uh, you know, five, whoever controls the monitor, we get together with them, talk about ideas, and then we actually have a proposal to bring forward uh, to the next next meeting. You want a subcommittee? Uh, I, let, let, let's get away from subcommittees and call it a working group. Okay. <laughs> so do we have, who's on the working group? <laughs> so I, I'm gonna volunteer. I'll, I'll volunteer. volunteer. <laughs> No more than 10 people, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, you're going to volunteer from the adventure side, Tammy? You bet. That's yeah. great. I'll represent Halliburton Adventure. Kate's um, museum. Pat? I'll volunteer, Kate? yes. What about the literary arts, Anna? <laughs> Yeah, there's definitely opportunity and we provide a lot of um, events. I wasn't sure where it crosses the line from highlighting what's happening in the county, which we can definitely do and advertising services. So, yeah. um, but if there's opportunity, then yes, we'd like to highlight what we do and what we offer. Yeah, I think this is the screensaver, which is basically images but I'm sure that uh, I have no idea exactly how the, everything will be loaded in there, but you know, definitely sh people should be able to get information about the library as well, so. This might already have been thought through by uh, Andrea and Alyssa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and Andrea? Well, I was just gonna say, I, not to mention a, a, a pretty screen with maybe some lovely paintings or some horseback riding or some sculptures, but the staff that work there and our part-time staff are really, really knowledgeable in all things Dysart and Halliburton County. So uh, as well as looking at those, whatever is coming up, popping up on a screen, the, the staff I know recommend all kinds of stuff and have interesting conversations with people. And so that conversation is also happening as well as perhaps mm -hmm. looking up on a screen. Okay. Uh, okay, so uh, Jim did or Danielle, did you write down the working group? Yep, so far I have Jim, Tammy, Kate, Lori, Pat. Okay, does that sound okay? All right, okay, I think we can move on to the uh, sharing information and task list. list. Um, Staff memo. Uh, Jeff, do you want to speak on that? Yes, I'm happy to. Um, over the past little while, staff have been trying to keep a, an internal to-do list, uh, basically tasks that arise from um, conversations, from the minutes, 
um, and not just for tasks for staff to do. This involves these subcommittees and everything like that. So, so what we've been trying to, to do internally um, and Danielle has been working on um, is we're gonna try and create something um, not just for staff members, but also for all committee members, just so that it's something everybody can refer to to see if there's something they still need to be doing or have to do and report back to for the next committee meeting. So this is uh, basically our, our first draft. Um, it's something we uh, welcome any insight or suggestions, but uh, yes, this is we want this to be a, a working tool available to the entire committee um, to see kind of what's going on, what's outstanding and what they need to be doing. So that's basically what it is. Okay. Um. And I just realized now that it's actually attached in an Excel file format. So some of you may not be able to open that and we will share a PDF uh, at another date. Danielle, did you have anything you wanted to add on that? Um, I was gonna say that we're hoping to put it on um, a cloud-based storage. Uh, so then if there are items that you wish to see on the next agenda or items that may have been missed out of the minutes, um, you can edit it. Um, so then all of us are updated on what topics that want to be discussed. Um, so if, for, for you who were able to open it, I apologize for not adding the PDF. Um, I did list completed tasks in red, for example, but if you have any suggestions of how you wish to see that, I'm all yours. Okay, that sounds good, Anna. I think it looks great and um, it's good for accountability and follow-up. So yeah, thanks. Um, one comment, we probably wanna complete things, not compete things. <laughs> this is a competition, is it not? To see who gets their name on the list the most? Uh, no, but thank you. <laughs> Back. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, we can go member update. Or do we want to do member update now or after the what, six work plan items? Um, maybe, well, we'll just follow the agenda and we'll do the member update now then. So, um, um, Mm -hmm. Who to start with? Victoria, you want to just give a member update? Uh, sure. So uh, I took it upon myself to try and define what I should be talking about during a member update. So if you don't agree with what I'm updating about, let me know and I will amend it for next time. Um, so we've had a, a few events that have happened in young professionals in the arts and cultural organizations uh, recently. Um, so Scott Walling recently did an Instagram sale of some of his um, limited edition clothing items. Um, he did a, a limited run. Um, and so that was through his Instagram stories. And as far as I can tell, it was quite successful. I myself purchased a piece. <laughs> um, so that's good. Um, Can or Ka Mexicanus, um, which is an arts organization led by Greg and Hannah Sadler, um, are getting ready to start their summer camp programs. So they are an organization that pairs with international students and normally would be bringing some of them here. And then the kids from Canada go over there and have a cultural exchange. Obviously that's not gonna happen this year, but they're still running, running arts programs. And they also started something called the Backroots Arts Collective. And um, these um, are youth artist led um, initiatives. And one that happened was um, Greg and two students, one from Halliburton and one from Mexico, performed virtually at the Halliburton Open Stage um, as, a, as a trio and a duo um, performing songs. So that was pretty cool. Um, uh, they did that via Zoom. Um, and then um, Kelsey Redman, who is a um, Dysart resident who lives in West Guilford, was recently profiled in an interview on Digits and Threads, which is a digital magazine um, that promotes Canadian fiber and fiber arts and textiles. Um, so, um, and that's all I have for 
people that I know about. Um, I'm sure that some of the other artists that have studios are getting ready to open soon, but I don't have confirmation from those people about whether they're actually open or not. Um, but you can always check out their websites. Um, people like Tiffany Howe and Sophie Creelman. Um, check out what they're doing. Oh, and the studio tour um, is happening, supposed to be happening this year. So um, Sophie Creelman is an artist on the studio tour. You can check her out there. Great. That was an awesome update. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Kate, do you want to give us a museum update? Sure. So um, with the, the province's reopening plan, um, we are starting to, <laughs> we're, well, as I, as I said, we're getting there. Um, the interior spaces of museums aren't allowed to reopen until phase three. So we're looking then at later on in the summer. But the great thing is because it's summer, and the weather's great, it means that we're going to be able to take some of what we do outside in the meantime, because there are possibilities in terms of you know, outdoor historic sites and touring and guiding that have opened up under the earlier phases. So yes, yeah, so we're just going to be taking a lot of stuff outdoors um, in the next little while and finding ways to share that with people in uh, share the collection and our local history with people in Glee Park and in our outdoor spaces and then preparing for when we can actually have things open indoors again but we still got a while to wait for that one so we'll just we'll be patient and we'll be creative and, uh, and carry on um, as we do so that's us great okay Laurie okay oh am I yes I'm not muted um the reopening thing I've been calling weekly, and it's interesting, I discovered that even though we're a museum, or classified, art galleries and museums are in the same uh, pot there with stage three, our organizations have been doing some advocacy, trying to get it switched a little, and there was a lot of letter writing. And so in any case, the retail aspect of Rails End, which is our consignment, where we have over 60 local artists consigning work to us, is going to reopen tomorrow. And uh, with a capacity of three people, just the way we did last summer. So that should be interesting. And we've got, we had a plan to move everything outside too. And so that's still our plan as well. We received funding from uh, HCDC for a project called Drawing the Line, which is an outdoor sketching program that will, is set to launch in August and involves three outdoor mini galleries, which will be put in our garden for artwork to be placed in by the participants in the program. And Drawing the Line um, is, double like pencils, but also drawing the Victoria rail line from rails end to the head of the rail trail. So we're partnering with the rail trail, friends of the rail trail. And we've booked the pride mobile for several appearances up here in Halliburton. And we've got outdoor demonstrations planned for traditional craft, um, things like what Kelsey Redman has been doing and Sandra Clark and of course, as people have been doing forever up here who don't want to waste anything, and also uh, pottery wheel demonstrations and painting and things. And what else? I made a couple of notes. Art Squared is back. Uh, it's a fundraiser. It's an independent committee of painters who have decided to support Rails End um, again this year. So we'll be working with them with an outdoor component to hopefully sell some 12 inch square paintings and raise some money. It's been really hard losing our big events and I've already started to get calls, people saying, well, when the province opens up, does that mean the art and craft festival's happening? And I'd say, actually, no, we've declared it the summer of art and craft. So that's what we're working with. Get it outside, do as much as we can. And uh, it includes an art crawl and a variety of programming things. Yeah. And we launched a blog and it's getting some really good uptake. If you want to read some insightful reading about artists, check it out, railsandgallery.com. Great, thank thought. you. That was, that was a good update. That was a great update. Okay, uh, Pat. 
Okay, um, I, I guess the biggest push that we've been putting on lately is the directory and that was finally out this week. So um, uh, we are picking those up and starting to distribute them. Uh, they are going out in the Echo this year, probably either June 22nd or the 29th, so that they're broadly distributed throughout uh, Halliburton County. And of course, we're getting ready to put them in uh, different venues. Certainly, we'll drop some off at the Welcome Center and Rails End Gallery and, and uh, Museum, different venues so that they are broadly available. Uh, they look great. I should say this. It looks great this year. Um, I think I talked about the Digital Comfort Studio last, um, last month, and we've now got funding from HCDC. Thank you very much, Jim, again, uh, to continue that with what we're calling the Digital Comfort Cafe. And that's that again, that's networking for the people that took the training through the Digital Comfort Studio. The intent is that those people that uh, I think they were, um, I think there's about 12 or 13 of them that actually finished the training, which was fairly intensive. But then that um, uh, makes, uh, makes them available to the broader arts community as mentors with, the, uh, uh, with helping out with their digital presence. Uh, so again, that's, uh, that's a network, uh, that Digital Comfort Cafe is a networking opportunity. And um, I guess our uh, biggest challenge lately has been to decide how we are going to pivot our artists in the schools and community program. Uh, that program is, uh, has been in a bit of a uh, hiatus, I'll put it that way, because we weren't uh, able to get into the schools. And actually the funding that we used to get through Trillium Lakeland seems to have come to an end. So we're now starting to think of how we can uh, make that program resilient and, uh, and meet the needs of the community. Uh, before COVID, we were starting to um, uh, partner with the Youth Hub and offer programming through the Youth Hub. Uh, I know Comexicanus has uh, expressed an interest in, in continuing a relationship there also. And so we're looking more at uh, uh, servicing the community through uh, the Youth Hub, youth programming, whether that's you know, uh, partnering with the Rails End Gallery, the library, other organizations like that. And we're also starting to think about seniors programming. So we're putting more emphasis on the community aspect of it until we, until we can uh, feel out the school board again as to what sort of opportunities there are available. Um, arts programming for children is so important. And of course we have a uh, uh, high, uh, high number of low income uh, families that uh, where it's difficult for these, these uh, students to have uh, the opportunity for arts education. So certainly if we can work something out with the school board, we, we certainly want to get back into the schools. Um, as Victoria said, there are, uh, you know, we partner with a lot of agencies similar to you. So some of the things that you've mentioned, Victoria, I'm probably going to run over again. But we do have connections with Tour de Forest, which is starting to uh, ramp up for their show, which is at the end of August. Um, Sophie Creelman that you mentioned is actually sitting on the studio tour. So she's a good networking opportunity with us. It keeps us connected with what the studio tour is doing. Um, there are a couple of uh, smaller tours happening in Highlands East this year. And um, certainly uh, Kinesis Lake is, is uh, going forward with their Art on the Dock uh, program. And that would be, I think it's July the 17th and 18th is that weekend. And Kinesis Lake is actually starting an, uh, an Art on the Dock program too. So there's lots of art happening within the uh, community this summer uh, from, again, a variety of different organizations. Okay, that is, that is a good update. Um, thank you. Yeah, Andrea? Uh, just listening at the end, because you said Kinesis Lake, but did you mean Kashaga Wigwag? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, Kashaga Wigwag. Uh, yeah, so Art I on the that. Dock is Kinesis Lake, and yes, Kashaga is, uh, is starting their own um, Art on the Dock project. And I think Great. that one's early in August, if I, if I remember that. Uh, um, maybe not the long weekend in August, but the weekend after the long weekend in August. Okay. That, that's great. Okay, uh, Ron. Yeah, um, so what I did uh, over the last month or so is I reached out to the, the big five uh, in the county, the three newspapers, the two radio stations to see if they wanted to give up any, any updates and most of them responded. 
So um, Simon from the Highlander, he's really excited that they've got their new Colin and Justin uh, lifestyle magazine coming out. And it's, it's, it's geared towards uh, Halliburton County, but it's also going out to Muskoka this year. So they're, they're really happy that they, they can expand for that. Um, had a nice discussion uh, with, uh, with Mike at the, the Minden Times, um, fairly newish editor. And he also reports for, for the, the Echo. So I'm going to pretend that both papers responded <laughs> through him. <laughs> um, so he, once again, they've also got their summer guide that's coming out if it's not all out already. And it's going to be covering um, profiles, uh, features, and it's going to cover events and list them for stuff that's coming out between June and October this year. And one other thing that he said is that the, the Times, they've reached a partnership with the, uh, uh, with the, with the Halliburton Junior Huskies, uh, or Junior A hockey team this year. And they're going to do a whole bunch of, ex uh, well, a whole lot of extension, extensive coverage with them uh, leading up to the beginning of their first season here. So that should be pretty cool for him. Um, Canoe, uh, they've got the Radiothon coming up uh, July 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. Uh, they started a couple of new uh, radio shows. They've got a new jazz show Monday nights. Um, they've partnered with uh, the Highlands Little Theater, the Royal Rogues, and Highlands Summer Festival to do radio plays on every other Wednesday. Um, so those are pretty cool. And I, I also heard a rumor that there's a, a monthly trivia night that's on the radio now. Um, it may have started last night. So that, that's, that's kind of fun. And also they've got their, their call out for uh, board of directors for next year. And the deadline for that is the 15th. And um, didn't hear anything back from the moose. So if you're watching, email me. <laughs> A great update. Thanks. Uh, Anna. Sure. Um... I'm so impressed with everything that's going on um, despite a pandemic. You guys are amazing. Um, so for the summer, we're planning most of our programming to be passive. We're going to have story walks. Um, I think weekly, uh, we're planning to do some library pop-ups outside. So not passive programming. Um, so there'll be one day a week in Dysart, in Halliburton, uh, probably just outside the library and activities will vary week to week, but they'll feature things like scavenger hunts or highlighting things that we have at the library that people might not know about. We might even be able to sign people up for library cards outside, um, all that sort of stuff to be determined. Um, we, our seed library kits have been popular. So we've been putting out kits of, uh, different seeds, so like pollinator kits and basic garden kits and herb kits available at all our branches. Um, I think there's one more to come later in the summer. Uh, and we're planning to continue our grab and go crafts throughout the summer too, including some that are geared more to teens. Um, so like puzzle style break-in craft bags. Um, We've been doing some behind the scenes on our Facebook page. So if you guys haven't seen that, it's, uh, it's neat. You get to see what our staff actually do all day. They move real fast. Um, so we're, we're not allowed to reopen until stage two, but we're looking at doing that. So that'll be another three weeks away or so. Um, we're looking at keeping reduced hours for now, just and, and easing back into it, but um, that'll be announced when we know. Um, we did reopen interlibrary loan. So that's available again at a limited amount um, as we revamp that up again. Um, we're starting our new website. Very, it'll be a long process, but hooray, hooray, new website. Um, and then very breaking news that just came in on my email uh we are going to be partnering with youth hub this summer to do some virtual programming for teens content to be that that's very very new so no details yet um and yes our survey for the strategic plan went out in county life and then there's a few of you um arts council museum uh that i'll contact directly to talk about you know what's going on with your organization over the next five years and what does that potentially look like for the library and those kind of things so yes yeah. great that was a great update thank you jim
Mike. Next Wednesday, uh, six sculptures will be installed in downtown Halliburton for the downtown Halliburton Sculpture Exhibition. Uh, so that's great. We won't be able to have our usual uh, sort of you know launch and you know crowds walking about the the street, but the uh, the sculptures will be going up on the the sixteenth, and um, we will be. Um, uh, I expect we'll be videotaping the artists actually talking about their work, and uh, and then we'll post that you know on the Sculpture Forge website on Facebook and and all those sorts of things. So that's a collaboration uh, with the BIA and with um, the Sculpture Forest, uh, with support from Halliburton County Development Corporation, and our lead. Um, uh, business sponsor this year is the Omera Group, uh, which uh, is Chris Omera and, uh, and and Pretty Paws. So that's that's really exciting to have a, a new lead sponsor for uh, for, for for that event. Um, so if you're out wandering around on Wednesday, you'll see the sculptures uh, getting installed on uh, on Highland Street. So that's pretty exciting. Um, the next exciting thing is our. Um, our beautiful new uh, brochure, uh, which some of you may have seen, and uh, they're certainly at the Welcome Center, and there's at the Rails End Gallery, and at the museum. And I know you can't actually get into places, but the brochures are there, and they are, uh, you know, at our. So it's uh, new and improved. Um, it's twice as big as it was before. We've included information about all the galleries in town. Um, and also, um, you know, information about downtown Halliburton, uh, information about the museum, about the college, um, you know, fun activities, and um, also a uh, fabulous new map. So it's we have so many sculptures now. We needed to double the size of the uh, of the brochure. Anyway, so we're we're pretty darn excited. Uh, cited about uh, about that. Um, now, of course, it's twice as big, so only half as many fit in into the uh, brochure racks. So now I've got to get out there twice as often to uh, to fill the brochure racks. Uh, it's been a fairly slow spring. I mean, there's there's constantly visitors at the Sculpture Forest, but it's been a fairly slow spring, um, mostly because of the the shutdown. So we don't have we don't have the crowds. Uh, coming from the GTA, but I expect that will start picking up as soon uh, as this lockdown starts uh, starts to lift. Uh, we have a uh, a new sculpture which will be installed in the next couple of weeks by Gord um, Gord Petterin, who is the artist who created the red doors for the college, and uh, so that uh, I'll I'll let you know when when that but it is going to go in in the next couple of couple of weeks. I mean, normally we have a big event related to the installation of the sculpture. We'll have to wait till a little bit later in the year to uh, to do that. Um, I think that's about uh, this year is the twentieth anniversary of the founding of the Sculpture Forest, and uh, we hope to be doing some interesting activities in the Sculpture Forest when things uh, get a little looser. So you know, stay, stay tuned for that. I expect we'll be seeing dance uh, uh, happening uh, throughout the Sculpture Forest at, uh, at, at different, different points. So, so I think that's it from the, uh, uh, from the Sculpture Forest uh, perspective. And uh, HCDC, I don't think there's anything that exciting. The, um, uh, our business incubator is slow, will be slowly opening up again. Uh, I mean, there were businesses operating in it, but we didn't have it open for people to be able to use hot desks or the adventure desks. And that will be slowly, you know, as things open up, it will be more available to uh, the public to be used. And uh, Heather Reed is coordinating the business incubator now. So she's the person to, uh, to get in touch with. And uh, and I meant to ask a question when we were having discussion about the Welcome Center, and I missed it because we got 
very involved in the discussion of art. And it was a question about the doors. And um, so I noticed we got doors in there, but it, it looks like it's still part of a construction site because the doors are totally unfinished. And of course, when people put their hands on that metal, it gets marred, et cetera. So I was just wondering what the plan is. Um, I have ideas, but I wasn't wondering what the plan is to get those, those doors painted. It is an aesthetic piece of our, uh, our responsibilities. I, I had a conversation with Andrea and Alyssa about that. And um, there is no plan right now, nor is there a plan to even paint them. So I think there's a chance. Yeah. Over. Anyway. Okay. Yeah. Andrea, did you want to speak? No, to that? Lori. Lori said it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so Jim, I think that yeah, you, have you got some ideas? Well, it's just. I mean, it's it's um, it, it's just too bad because the welcome center is so beautiful, and then we have these doors which are industrial doors on it, which which you know just aren't that welcoming. Um, the paint just painting the doors is not uh, very good because putting paint on metal like that it'll just peel off i mean really the only way to do it is by getting them powder coated uh, so i have no idea what the cost of that is uh, you know we certainly we, we did that with the dandelion sculpture um you know we took it to a, a place and you know they powder coated it. it wasn't actually that expensive to get done um, anyway, so are there, you know, possibilities that we can, you know, do them one at a time? It'd be lovely to see a whole bunch of colored doors, sort of like walking through the streets of St. John's. Um, uh, or perhaps we can look at, uh, you know, the plastic film that gets put on things. Uh, you know, speaking of the fact that we don't have a place for artwork, well, we actually have about 16 doors that we could use mm -hmm. for artwork. So that that might also be a possibility for some of the money that we have. Um, anyway, I just, I just think it's, uh, it's always, um, uh, it's just too, it, it's always too bad when you, when we invest so much in a, a beautiful building that, you know, that last piece doesn't, uh, I'd love to kick it through the goalpost. I think that's a great, I, I think that's a great idea. Um, who, who, who do we go to, Andrea? How about just, I've heard that. I wasn't part of the construction committee. I asked the same thing when it was built and was a bit shocked and surprised. So let's just, because we have to finish members update and there was still a couple items and I, I am gonna have to, I'll just, I got about five minutes left before I gotta go. So how about just, instead of ha having the conversation now, I will pass that message on and see and, and uh, Jim just posed an idea that we do have money left in the budget. We can sort of investigate that um, okay. different okay. ideas for the doors. Can uh, can Jeff just put that on the agenda or um, sure. so that we don't forget about it and that we can get some background on that, how we can make that happen? Is that all I just right, added it to my list to follow up okay. with uh, the staff about that. So Perfect. I'll add that okay. to the list with regards to right. the even a rainbow, the rainbow colors or something, just something. <laughs> nice. Right. So Jim, Jim, will you finish your update or did you have anything I'm, else? I'm done. You're good? Okay, thank you. And Andrea, did you have anything to update? Well, I can't really think uh, right now because uh, no, got uh, just okay. busy. I was going to mention it. I'm just really excited that we have washrooms downtown and uh, flush washrooms. It's <laughs> come a long way, baby. Um, lots of things happening, lots of construction projects happening around town. Uh, Jeff is probably <laughs> chomping at the bit to get back to work because we are so busy. And Danielle in the planning department, it isn't even funny. This uh, COVID and what's happening in real estate and what's happening with other just demographics of people wanting to live at their cottages and or make these their homes there's going to be a little bit of an explosion of um, some projects coming forward in the next couple of years and there's about three or four that I can think of right now in the works just in Dicer just on our plate so um, it's busy it's busy around town and just like Lori said earlier I'm so excited that stores are going to be allowed to be open. And so, you know, don't 
shop at Big Box, if you could possibly help it try to, you know, go, go back into those stores that have been hanging on by their teeth and nails and, uh, and support our, our shops and stores and stuff in town. Tammy, I am going to sign off now. So thank you so much. And uh, I'll see some of you later this afternoon. Thanks. Bye. Okay. Um, so to get, we have 15 minutes left. Um, Jeff, do you want to speak to the inventory or is a staff memo displaying and in review inventories? Oh, Mike. Yep, thank you. Um, I might actually pass this one to Danielle because I, I know she's been doing a little homework on this, so she can share it with you all. Perfect. Okay. So uh, plan is to have all the inventories up on the cloud-based software uh, so everyone's able to access them and review them uh, instead of them having as individual agenda items. Maybe we can focus on one that everyone's going to look at um, to see if there needs to be updates. Uh, during the last meeting, uh, it was a request to staff to research ways to possibly display these inventories. Um, so I, in the staff report, I've added a few different ways that we could possibly display things depending on if we want pictures and media, do we want um, word blog, like words with pictures. Um, so, I've, so there's interactive maps. You could always have a PowerPoint that someone could access. Uh, there's different things like Sway and Prezi where it's like an online canvas where it shoots you to different objects and it's, it's sort of playful. Um, yeah, just some ideas for you guys to uh, consider. Um, any feedback? I just have a quick one. If, um, if you make it so that uh, it was a first time person viewing, like so if somebody new comes on the committee that it's easy to access and easy to understand how you've done it as a new person coming in, I would be very advantageous, I believe, to the, the, the new people coming in that do want to do research and find out what the committee's about and that and, and do the inventory. So as long as I think you know what you're doing. So as long as you pick something that's easy for everyone to maneuver through and find stuff is good. I don't know if we have to, I like I, your expertise, expertise is um, unless if comments from the from the committee, if you use a certain program that you think would be good, or is are we good for Danielle to do her thing on the inventories? A Anna? I'm not entirely sure what we mean by inventories. Sorry. <laughs> Danielle? So there are inventories for, so example, um, pot, like there's plaques, there's public art in uh, places. So currently there is an interactive map that I am fixing um, that had pictures and information on it for buildings, plaques, art and public spaces. And I'm missing one more. Um, but then there are also other um, inventories as well that we have that um, I believe there's a cultural one, art and public spaces and tourism. So the tourism one is launched on the Halliburton County's map. Um, so it's just more for us to review to, or for you guys to review, um, if there's anything that needs to be added, has maybe something been taken down that you guys have noticed uh, that either can be updated on the tourism map or on our interactive maps. And if you want different things displayed uh, for the public differently, um, I'm all yours. And there, if I could just elaborate, there's a couple components here. So first off, staff are, as, as mentioned in the report, staff are working with IT. Uh, um, to get this next cloud up and running. So that's gonna be the first component is getting these inventories available to everybody where they can edit them um, and save them. And the second component um, for the committee uh, committee's uh, discretion is looking at each of those different inventories and figuring out how they want to store and display them even, or if they want to display them. Um, some of them perhaps just a database is sufficient um, doesn't really do much justice to, to the stuff in that inventory just to store it. So um, yeah, Danielle's provided some uh, different uh, digital applications that might be uh, might be useful for storing them. So I don't know if that's something that, uh, the, it's something on the work plan for this year, uh, looking at those inventories. I think it was more updating those, but if the committee wants to, to, to look at different ways of 
displaying them and sharing them and that's those might be some options uh jim oh go ahead anna could you have a follow-up um yeah i just wanted to say that it's going to matter the intent of why we're looking at the inventories is going to change what we choose for displaying them like if it, it's for the public then we want probably something that's more interactive like Prezi or Sway. But if it's for our internal use, uh, we probably want something that's just easy to search and um, you know laid out in a way that is intuitive and that we can access everything. So it, it depends on the use. Yeah. So um, just to respond to that, Anna, I think we're, we're, we're actually looking at both purposes. We did a we did a full inventory of the um, the public art in uh, in dice art, which included um, uh, you know art, sculpture, uh, heritage artifacts, you know architectural uh, you know unique things, and I can't remember. <laughs> anyway, I can't come up with a four. There 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 are four things on the list, um, and uh, so we came up with a full inventory of that, which which we really need to be putting that into a database so that we can be just just like our dice art infrastructure database we can keep track of things see whether they need to be repaired replaced sold you know all, all those kinds of things so so that that's a whole functional piece and then there are the ones that we really want to tell the public about um so we we have the 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 out face and the uh, and the in face so we, we actually have to accomplish both things um and some of them are just really 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 long lists of things that we just need to keep updated um and, and other other ones we need to be monitoring on a regular basis um in terms of like you know something like the mural wall like well how do you actually maintain that what what's done on an annual basis you know all, all those kinds of things um so the, my my question uh is also um we have a web page in the Dice Art uh, website, which is called Arts and Culture, but really it focuses on the municipal cultural plan. So it doesn't really, the page doesn't actually talk about arts and culture in Dice Art. So I, I think, you, you know, this is, you know, to add yet another thing to that beautiful list, Jeff is i mean that sort of our external face to the public would be that arts and council arts and uh, culture page and then on there we would you know what is that we want to actually have on there uh, the cultural plan was important but it's really i mean you know for the regular citizen it's pretty dry <laughs> You know, what, what, what people are really interested in is like, what's actually happening in arts and culture in the community? Um, anyway, so I, I'd, I'd love for us to be able to, while Dan, Danielle is looking at how do we display this fabulous stuff that we have, then what does our web page look like so that when people go there, they go, oh, look at this and look at this video and look at this thing. Dan, Danielle? Do you want me to connect the public art and culture interactive map to the arts and cultural page. Because currently it's under explore and play maps, but I can always link it so it goes there as well. Uh, that'd be a good start, yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah well, we can follow Just my opinion. No, it's a good point, especially uh, because the information about the cultural plan is actually under explore and play, which probably is information that should be under municipal government or uh, even maybe build and invest, but <laughs> you're right, under explore and in play, it should be more of a, more of an advertising, uh, marketing thing to, to let people know what's going on and what different organizations are doing. So I'll follow up internally uh, with our website people and just see what the process is there for, for getting that changed and updated. And it's likely something we'll come back to all of you um, or input into, into that page. Okay, uh, Anna. Sorry, um, I I think what you might need more long term, like Nextcloud, would be useful for this committee. But what you might need more long term is to actually have a database that would integrate with a discovery layer, so that um, 
you don't have to like, you can create a Prezi, but that's a lot of manual work to pull things from the database and put them into a Prezi and then change it every time you need to change the Prezi. If you had a discovery layer that would integrate with your database, then as a committee, we can use the backend database and you can pull things from that for public viewing in whatever format that looks like. I don't have a product in mind. Good, good idea. Sorry, that's more. <laughs> noted, noted. Okay. Um, uh, Jeff, did you want to speak on the cultural asset video list or Danielle? Are you, which one's working on the video list? I, yep, believe, that, I believe that point was that uh, the committee wanted to discuss possibly creating cultural asset videos or um, displaying previous ones on the Facebook page. Um, if you want to provide us a little bit of direction, I could help. <laughs> okay, so um, we don't have time to discuss that right now. So can we put it back on the um, uh, agenda for August? And um, can we have it on the agenda as uh, I ideas required or so that people can know that they're going to want input on the asset, the cultural asset videos. And, and then if their organization or groups have, have such a thing, then they, they could be added to that video list. Might be an idea. Um, or get, in the meantime, because it's not till August, we, if, if the groups or organization have videos, clips that can they send them to you to that way we kind of have an a starting point just to start something on the video list. Danielle? Yeah, I, can, I can do that. And then um, if you guys wish for them to be displayed on Facebook, that's something that I can post as well. Um, it's up to you. Okay, we can start with that and uh, see what happens. Okay, and then um, so the last item is the head Lake Park Plan, Review Historical Archaeology, Artistic Potential. And it has a presentation that was at Council. Jim, do you want to speak to that or? Uh, I, I don't think I have anything to uh... okay. <laughs> This is a bit of a returning item, item uh, Tammy. And again, I don't know if there's much direction on this. I think there was some previous discussion about maybe appointing a subcommittee to review the artistic, uh, historical, um, and ar architectural potential for the park plan. Um, but there really has been much discussion or direction on that. Okay, uh, Pat? I just have one question. I, I noticed under section six, they talk about um, the, that outdoor storage area and that's where the bandstand is, but the bandstand isn't actually shown. Was there a reason that particular building wasn't shown when all the other buildings in the park were shown? Uh, within the park plan uh, numbers. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they, they show it as a great big open grassy park. Now, as I say in the text, it refers to the, um, uh, to the stage area, but that building is not actually shown on that schematic. I just wouldn't want that to be lost in the, the plan because it's such a uh, big component of the park, at that part of the park anyhow. Yeah, I, I, I don't know, is that maybe there was a reason it's not shown, but. It looks I'm, like, am I wrong? It looks like it might be shown. It's just really, it's under the number six outline. Oh, I see, they put the six on top of it. Okay, yep. I see, okay. I'm thinking that that's what that is. Um, okay. No, it was it just just a different color than the other buildings? So I guess I was a little confused. Okay. So, um, um, do we leave it on the agenda for the next agenda, or do we? Because there's other items that are going to take a lot of time. Um, or. So, so I'm, I'm just wondering, Tammy, if there's a if there's a phasing in process of this project, like say the fountain was going to be rebuilt. Well, we definitely we want to be involved in that discussion. Uh, you, you know, so maybe if we understand like what the potential phasing in it, of it is, then we can actually, you know, do things uh, on a regular basis. OK, so um, can we have so Jeff, could you. Um, 
could you just give us some feedback as to what staff uh, have in mind or like what Jim said, what, what happens first in the park on that presentation? And yeah, we wanna be definitely included in it, but what, what's the starting point and timelines um, just to see, it may not need to be on the agenda for another year because maybe they're not doing anything or maybe it needs to be on next month because something's happening. We just don't know about it, but maybe the staff does. That's a good point, Jim. As to- Yes, yes I, I can see what I can find out. I, I, cannot, okay. uh, I have not, not invo involved in this plan, but uh, I will talk to the staff um, and see what I can find out because I agree. If certainly something like the, the water uh, infrastructure, if that's going to be replaced, I think that should come through this committee. So I will see what I can find out. Okay, great. Thanks. Or um, doors. Or doors. Yes, or doors. <laughs> Just add that to the list. Um, okay. All right. It's 12 o'clock. And if, any, if nobody has any more comments... Um, and I can adjourn right on time. Has anybody got any more? We're good. So uh, I need a motion to adjourn. Somebody want a motion to adjourn? Victoria, and then Anna can second it. And all in favor of adjourning? Yes. All in favor? Carrie. Thanks, Tammy. Thank you so much, everybody. Thanks, Tammy. We got lots all right. Of, thanks uh, to the staff for being so organized. Yes. yes. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Great.